it's always fun to show you right now what I'm going to do in the video. So this is the finished urn that I'm going to color. And I'm going to color this from the inside and then do a little airbrushing on the outside. This video is going to be 30 minutes long. So if you're interested in this sort of technique, which I credit to Chris Pitlick from Sandy, Utah, 100%. Uh, Chris has been very gracious over the years talking to me and telling me some of his secrets. Um, I don't know, it's, uh, it's a little different. The colors didn't turn out quite like I intended, but that's okay. I don't have any finish on this. I intend to seal it. And what I use is a vinyl sealer, and I'm gonna spray probably 10 or 15 coats of lacquer on it and sand it to two, 3,000 grit and buff it. And uh, I think it'll be cool. So anyway, stay tuned and I'll show you how I did this. And I'm gonna put up here a couple more pieces that are in the works if you're interested. Otherwise, just kind of fast forward through this and uh, you're welcome to do that throughout the video because it, it's a little bit long, but there's a lot of stuff that I put in this video. So we'll set that aside and I'll show you another pot that I've worked on. And the colors in this are a little bit different. They're a little bit uh, maybe muted a little bit more subtle. And I've got a lid right there. And it's still in the works. I have not completed this yet. And that's threaded also. A very, very thin I can get that in the shot right there. Very thin lid that's threaded in. And let me just set this on here. I'll just set that on there just like that. You can kind of see the cross section of that. And I'm going to do a little bit of airbrushing on the top of this as well. And that just threads in the top of that. So. Anyway, let's get on to the project at hand. In my previous video, I showed how I finished turned this little urn, this hollow form. It's got a finial and it's ready for some finish. So I've decided to color it. All right, and what I do with this is I color it from the inside and the color wicks through the grain and we'll see that in just a second. Let me show you the stains I use, or the dyes. I get these from Stuart McDonald, and uh, one of these little bottles makes two quarts. This is two ounces, and each one makes two quarts of color, and you can mix it with alcohol or water. And I learned this technique from Chris Pitlick. Chris is a Sandy, Utah, Wood Turner, and he's getting pretty famous. Uh, I've learned pretty much everything I know about coloring with this technique from Chris. So, so let me show you my stains. They're all mixed up with alcohol. And I've got five different colors here that are available. And you can simply get the primary colors and mix them. That's not a bad idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with blue. All right. And I'm going to leave this in my little container here so I don't spill it. And what I do is I use these little things. These are called pipettes. And again, I learned that from Chris. It's a very good way to apply the stain. So here we go. Now I do have other videos showing this technique and what I do is I stick that pipette in there and you can see the color going all the way up to the top of that little bulb. And what I do is I'll have a couple of them in there. And you can see that going up. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So I'm going to put this back down here so I don't spill it. And what I've done to prepare this, I've got a bunch of little bark inclusions in this pot, and I've taken super glue and I've tried to fill those as best I can. 
because what will happen is the, the stain will bleed through if there's any holes in there and it'll just make a mess on the outside. So I'm going to pick a, a likely spot to start. And I try really hard not to get any uh, stain on the outside of it. So hold this upside down, put it in. And I'm going to just start applying this. I'll try to get uh, this in the camera so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I put that back in my little bottle of blue. And this is already filled up. So I'm starting to get a little bit of color through there. Now I don't do this when the piece is still on the lathe. I do this just like this, holding it. Starting to get a little color through there. Let's uh, pick this spot right here. So I'm going to pick blue. And I'm going to apply this from the inside until it doesn't take any more of the stain. Now you've got to be careful doing this because you can actually apply too much of this too quickly and you can crack the wood. Let's take a look and see what we've got so far. This is kind of a slow process. This takes a while. And what I've got up here is mostly end grain. This is an end grain turning. So I've got side grain here and it doesn't take the stain very well. But where there's end grain right around here and also in the bottom of the vessel, there's a little bit coming through down here. Uh, that'll wick through there. And what I eventually do is I fill in as much as I can from the inside and then I take my airbrush and complete the outside. So, yeah. And again, it's kind of a slow process, so let's, uh, let's pick another spot. Okay, let's take a look. I'm starting to get a little bit more color through there. And I've also got some in the bottom. So again, as I mentioned before, you're going to get more of that uh, stain bleeding through there where there's end grain. And one thing I've learned that's really important is apply a little bit and wait. Don't do too much all at once because you will get a crack in your in your piece, which is not fun. So let's put a little bit more in there. Now one thing I've learned doing this is you can apply too many different colors and it just looks uh, kind of like a mess. So I'm trying to limit myself maybe to two colors. <laughs> Well, it looks like Coco is trying to help do a little coloring this morning. I don't know. What do you think? We could use that for a mop. Well, I've got my first color in my pot here. Let's take a look at it. There's the bottom. And as I mentioned before, we're getting a lot of color bleeding through where the end grain is. This is the side grain and it's not very porous. There's the bottom and the end grain. What do you think? All right. So we're getting ready for the second color. We'll get to that in just a second. I wanted to show you another one of my colored pieces. And this is just kind of a funky piece. Let's try to get that in the, in the camera there. And I left this bottom round. I did a little bit of carving on that. I don't know if you can see that. Let me get that over here. There you go. 
Anyway, um, it's got a couple different colors in it. I've got some lacquer on that piece. It's all shined up. And I don't really have a lot of examples because I've sold a lot of them, which is a which is a good thing. So let's get back to our project at hand. And I'm going to get ready for the next color and get rid of this dog. What do you think? Okay, you wave bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, we got to go to work. We got to go to work. Okay, now a couple considerations when I'm doing coloring like this, from the inside especially, is I want a lot of contrast when I get done with this. All right, so I always start with the darkest color. I'm going to avoid red because if I put that in there, it's just simply going to blend in with that blue, probably make purple, and more than likely, oftentimes it turns really dark, almost like a black. So what I've selected for my next color is lemon yellow. And again, that's the uh, trans tint dye. And you can get that, I think, from Woodcraft. I get this from Stuart McDonald, stumac.com. And that's where I get all my buffing supplies. It's a really good outfit. I have a lot of really good items on there. So anyway, let's move on to some color. Now I'm trying to keep all the gunk and the color out of my threads. So I'm going to take some wax, some beeswax that I've got thinned down with a little bit of mineral oil. And I'm going to just uh, coat the threads. It's a lot easier to clean out this wax later on and that'll protect those, keep, uh, keep them a little cleaner. And I can simply clean that out later. So, all right. So I got my little bottle of yellow all ready to go. And I've got that down here in this container. So I don't spill it all over the place. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the blue. Is I'm simply going to turn this vessel on its side. Squirt some yellow in there. Now... I applied the blue yesterday and I think it's always a good idea to go a little bit slower with this. If you put too much in, you're going to have problems. If you get too much liquid in here because the wood's going to expand and I've had that happen before. And that's no fun after you've gone all this way. Now I can already see a little bit of yellow coming through there. Let's pick another likely spot here. What will happen, no doubt, is the blue and the yellow will combine. It will mix together. It will make another color, which isn't a bad thing. The only thing is you don't really have a lot of control over what you get. Now, I mentioned Chris Pitlick. You can find Chris on Facebook. Um, I was having trouble finding his website recently. And I contacted him and he said for some reason it's not working. But you can find him on Facebook. Um, and if, I think if you just Google his name, you'll find pictures. And he does some unbelievable work. I think it's... It's really groundbreaking, very unique and creative. Now, I'm going to put this last pipette of yellow in there, and I think I'm going to stop. I'm not getting a lot coming through there. I'm getting a little bit right in here, and I'm actually getting a little bit down in here, so it's, it's kind of combining with the blue. And what I'm going to do at this point, take a paper towel and turn this upside down so it drains back towards the opening. 
and I'm going to take a flashlight look inside and I'm looking for puddles and I'm okay I don't have any big puddles of color but I am going to turn this upside down leave that for five or ten minutes and go back to it and I'm actually getting a little bit of that yellow coming through on the bottom so that's just what I want so we'll get back to you and I'll let that sit and kind of soak in for a few minutes well I think I'm nearing the completion of stage one which is dyeing this vessel from the inside it's not really taking any more color there's the bottom there's the side going around which really didn't take a lot of uh, color there's the top now I don't like the bare wood here it's really not very pretty there's no figure in that not like at the top and the bottom so I'm going to go back in with my airbrush and I'm going to do a little bit of coloring so the decision at this time is what do I fill that in with what color well what are my options I could do some yellow which would be okay I could do maybe a mixture I've got some some brown dilute that a little bit so it's not quite so dark because I want that contrast um, but with an airbrush I've got a lot of control and I can just kind of blend that in another thing that I do once in a while as a control for the color is I take some denatured alcohol now my colors are mixed up with denatured alcohol you can mix these up with water and alcohol so I've got these mixed up with with alcohol I take a syringe and if I want to take some of my color from a larger container and put it into a smaller container like that I use one of these syringes and I get these at our uh, livestock supply place here in Warland so I take a syringe full of denatured alcohol and I spray that in there and I just kind of uh, turn my pot around so it coats the inside and what that'll do is it will dilute the color it kind of dissolves a little bit more because I don't like the real real dark areas and that just kind of um, well it just kind of blends them in with the color that's already there so I'm gonna let this sit for a few hours and then I'm gonna get my airbrush out and then we'll do a little bit more coloring and fill in here and I got a couple ideas I'm not sure right now what I'm gonna do I know what you're thinking about this pot to this point that Sam has ruined it well I tell you what it looks like heck right now and it always does and I'm a little bit reluctant to show this on a video but later on it's gonna look like this it's gonna be pretty cool and especially after you get a little bit of a, a final coat on there of lacquer or whatever and I'll probably make this shiny yeah real shiny all right I'll talk to you later okay now the next step in my process I'm going to do a little bit of airbrush work on the piece I've been working on right here and as I get going I'm going to put on a chemical respirator to protect myself up to this point I've been putting color into this pot with an eyedropper it doesn't really produce a lot of fumes but if I'm spraying for quite a while I've got a lot of vapor in the air and I'm going to use a chemical respirator and I'll do a voiceover when I get to my computer now here's my setup this is a Grex G-R-E-X air compressor I'll put a note up what the model number on this air compressor is cost around two hundred dollars and it's a dandy it's got a regulator right here actually I'm not sure if I added that regulator 
anyway. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on my setup here. I've got a little gravity feed cup right here, and really that's all you need. There's a little regulator right here that Grex sells. It's really cool, and you can adjust your air pressure. What I do is I set my air pressure here. I've got a little dial back here you can't see. It's set and I adjust it with this little knob right here. So now in my previous video, I was displaying some of my hollow forms and this little walnut hollow form with a strange shape, it's been wire brushed on the outside, all ready for an insert. So I put that on my lathe and I trued that up and I made an insert. There's my insert out of some black wood, and that fits right down into there. I haven't glued that in yet, obviously, because uh, I may want to do some more work on this. Now, this is the lid, okay? Nice piece of black wood. And what I've done on the detail on the edge of this is I've taken my 10 TPI thread chaser and just chased a groove on there for the detail decoration. So, all right, let's get back to the main event here. Now, while I was making this video, I was waiting for a delivery from Craft Supplies. And what I got yesterday was some spirit stain. This is mixed with denatured alcohol, and this fits right into the colors that I'm using already. And what I did is, among that delivery, I've got blue and I've also got white. When you're mixing stains like I'm doing, I'm not sure, I could be wrong, I'm not sure if Stuart McDonald has a white stain. Anyway, I mixed up blue and white. What I was aiming for was a light blue right here something close to turquoise. I like that color. So you mix that up a little bit. I've got that in a little bottle with an eyedropper. So there's the color. Now, good idea when you're messing around with color or experimenting with something is find a little piece that you can experiment on. So there's a little bit of blue and I just sprayed that the other day. And I really don't know what I'm going to get exactly until I put some of that on there. Probably what I'll do is I'll start on the base down here. I'm going to just spray in the white areas and I can kind of blend that in and mix it. And if I want to, I can add a little bit more blue and make it darker or add a little bit of white and make it lighter. So let me get my respirator on and I'll do some airbrushing. Now I'm going to give you a play-by-play -play of a little bit of airbrush work. Putting a little bit of my pale blue color into the cup. Not really putting very much in there. You can see it's just a couple eyedroppers full. And again, I'm just taking a, a little bowl that I haven't finished yet. Seeing what that's going to look like. And I'm going to start on the bottom of my pot and just... Make sure that's uh, coming out nicely. I'm not getting any clogs or s splatters from my airbrush. And I'm airbrushing basically denatured alcohol with the color. And it's very thin down. It's not like airbrushing airbrush paint, which can be uh, a little bit difficult in my opinion. But anyway, I'm filling in the middle just uh, kind of painting that. I, I use my airbrush basically as a paintbrush. It's a lot more controllable than a paintbrush or a paper towel like I used to use. So a little bit more color and I'm speeding this up quite a bit. I'm taking 10 minutes of video and condensing it into one or two minutes and this is basically painting this onto the surface. It's not really penetrating very deeply into the wood. 
It's easily controllable, as you can see, and I can go back and put more on. Now in the very center of my pot, whenever we get to that right here, I'm putting this pale blue on there and later on I decide to make it a little darker. I don't really like that uh, pale blue all over this vessel and I just take my airbrush and make that a little bit darker blue and I like that a little bit more. I asked my wife what this looked like and she said, well, it looks like the earth. And I, you know, it's exactly what I thought when I uh, painted this. You have some green islands and a lot of ocean in this vessel. And now I'm going to take some yellow and I'm going to do some highlighting on this. Let me just pick some places and uh, kind of highlight where the one color meets the blue. And later on, I decide I like this a lot. It just adds a little bit of uh, contrast to it. And the nice thing about an airbrush is you're not putting on a lot of paint. It's easily correctable. You can put another color over the top of that. So, well, there you go. I'm just about done with that piece. Well, thank you once again for tuning in. I appreciate it. I really appreciate your support and uh, Hope you like this, send me your comments, and I'll see you next time. Yeah. Need to put a little bit of finish on that, and I'll show you that sometime in a future video.